Hi folks, welcome to another episode of the NYC CNC. Today I wanted to spend a few minutes walking through the Python code for the Judd Treat Machine. I'm going to use PuTTY to connect to my Raspberry Pi at the terminal level. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my VNC software. That will let us connect to the GUI, which is a much easier way to uh, view and work with the code. Same IP with a colon 1 at the end. And now we are in the Raspberry Pi um, or the Adafruit Occidentalist, which is what OS I'm using. We'll go ahead and open up the file manager. And here is our code. So to start with, I noticed uh, when I was learning to write my Python scripts for this that when you borrow a, a Python code online, it doesn't work on the Raspberry Pi unless you add this first line, which I think just tells um, Python where its uh, its own source information is located on the Pi. So that's important. Um, I do quite a few imports here. They're all labeled, and uh, again, I didn't write any of these. I just borrowed them and grabbed them as needed from other sketches and source code. Um, but I sorted them into the generic ones, ones relating to working with the Gmail interface and for the servo. I then define a few variables here including the username this is obviously his email address for Gmail and then you would put in the password for that Gmail account I'm gonna skip all these functions for now and we're gonna go look at the actual code and we'll come back to those functions as they're called so the first function is home spell so we'll scroll up so home spell is what spells out the uh, Judd treat machine text like a typewriter um, I'd love to hear from someone if there's a better way to do this. I did it by building that text into a list array and then for each item in that list display it and pause 0.2 seconds in between. It worked fine but um, I'd love to hear again if there's a better way. After that we then switch to the standard home screen function and that is uh, making use of Adafruit's 20 by 4 LCD displaying the text the Judd Treat Machine awaiting emails hurry up. After that, we have a few lines of code that queries the Gmail. And then what we do is we say mail list equals check email. So the check email function is the first one, I believe. So check email goes through and it looks for any email addresses in Judd's inbox that are unread. That's what determines whether or not the email gets added to this array. And what, what it does is it grabs certain information from an unread email and it includes the uh, actual email address of the sender but it also includes some other stuff I think including the person's um, email name. So what you then have to do within that function is call the function below which is get senders we call that right here and it, that function goes through and grabs and isolates just <clears throat> their actual email address so that you've got a clean um, bit. I think it does that by extracting the from field. Again, I grabbed this code online. I couldn't really, I could never write this on my own, but I was e easy enough to comment it through here when I was knee deep in this project and it works great. So then you do, <clears throat> after that, um, I have this line in here. I've been working on this project for quite a few months and I think this was a uh, debugging um, way I built a temporary list to sort of look at the output. So I don't think I actually use that anymore. Um, and then what it says is if mail list, and that what that means in layman's terms is if there's something in the mail list. In other words, if there were any unread emails, it prints woof woof I'm getting a treat. That happens not on the LCD but just in the terminal dialog. And then I do treat LCD. That's this code right here which says woof woof I'm about to get treats and then I wiggle, that's the first code for the servo right here and I'll be honest I don't really understand um, working with servos here is not nearly as straightforward as it is with an Arduino um, I've experimented with this code and I got it to wiggle like I wanted to but I'm looking forward to learning more about how to nail down servo positioning and, and motion in the Raspberry Pi Python environment but that does the little wiggle <clears throat> then load treats so that takes, I have a transistor on pin 8, which is um, the variable here we define, I believe, up above. Transistor equals pin 8. On the 
pinout boards of the Pi. And so you turn that transistor on, that turns this, the DC gear motor you see at the top of the machine on, and it drives via a chain the tube. You'll see that in the other video where I talk about the physical design of the machine. Pauses for six seconds while it's running, and then it turns it back off. Then I take the picture. You want to take the picture before you dump the treats, that way Judd is still hopefully looking at the machine. This took me a while, and I was experimenting with the USB camera um, to get it to work correctly. But basically, I, I pause for half a second, then I call the code. You see I've got a lot of code commented out here, so you can ignore that. But I pay, basically pass these variables through, which, which you can research more online if you look up this function here. But they have to do with the contrast and brightness and, and so forth. And then you pause for two seconds. The webcam is not the best solution. I think Raspberry Pi is coming out with their own camera. That should be better. Um, the, the quality is a problem sometimes. Sometimes the image fails to take a picture. Sometimes it takes the picture but is unable to write the file. Um, so it's a little bit buggy, but um, the best I've got for now. After you take the picture, you dump LCD. So that just uh, changes the LCD message saying the treats are being dispensed. Dump treats itself is another servo function that rotates the hopper 180 degrees to drop the treats onto the ground. And then finally, send thank you to mail list. So thank you is the code right here. And this is pretty cool. This is what loops through the list and writes an email to the person and attaches a file. What I like about this is that it loops through and sends individual emails versus emailing everybody on a CC basis or two basis together, which would obviously disclose everyone's email, which I don't think I would like. So it loops through, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it appends the file snap.jpg. That is the picture that was just taken by the webcam. It's the, the body of the email address right here. Um, and again, I grabbed most of this code online and just sort of tweaked it a little bit as needed. And I think that's it, folks. Um, it then pauses for a minute. Program pause I have right now set to five minutes, so it basically checks the machine every five minutes to see um, if there's new email addresses. And uh, a few parting thoughts. I did have some troubles with some parts of this code. I used the website Fiverr, F-I-V-E-E-R-R, -E -E which is a great way to spend $5 and you get someone to help you with anything. I happen to look for, for Python code, but check the website out. They have everything from you know, Photoshop to writing um, a business plan or you know lots of different things to help with but the idea is all for five dollars and there were lots of ways I wanted to expand this project by adding an analog to digital converter which had a photo sensor inside the hopper to, to, to load a certain amount of treats until the it got full and adding external interfaces with a remote switch so that Judd could manually activate the machine itself um, lots more things you could do but I wanted to keep it simple for now post any comments or questions below if you have some, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Otherwise, please, by all means, I encourage you guys to take this code and, and use it in your own projects or, or however it may be helpful to you. Um, otherwise, that's all for now, folks. Thanks. Take care.